So I'm going to say something about lignin. Uh, lignin is made of um, three fundamental building blocks, which are called para, kumaril, coniferile. No guesses where that name comes from. And cyanapile alcohols. And the structure of these is as follows. Take a little while to draw these out. So just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Quiet, isn't it? There we are. Okay, so you can see the difference immediately that we have a substitution with a methoxy group at that position, and here we have a substitution with two methoxy groups adjacent to this phenyl hydroxyl group. So that has consequences for the lignin structure, as we'll see later. Um, so the ratio of these three groups um, determines the lignin structure to some extent. And uh, you'll find that this type of structure predominates in grassy lignins, whereas tree lignins tend to have more of these. And I think it's true to say that hardwoods probably have more of this compared with softwoods. But you'll have to look that one up. This does have consequences. Uh, we need to be thinking about the bonding between all the different parts of lignin because the lignin structure is astonishingly... One, two, two... I thought something was going wrong there. Four, five, six. There had to be six. So with the three uh, building blocks here, um, the way that nature produces the lignin macromolecule, having synthesised these building blocks, is, is through a free, a free radical process. Uh, which I'm not going to go into what the details of the free radical process are, but basically the lignin molecule that forms is, is a completely random structure and uh, the free radical that's generated by the, uh, by the enzymes that do this sort of thing um, put free radicals at certain positions or certain positions are much more likely to have a free radical on them, which has got something to do with the electronic structure of the molecule. So what I'm drawing in red here is where the free radical most likes to sit. Uh, and you can notice immediately there's also a position here on this phenolic hydroxyl, which has got something to do with the electron uh, withdrawing power of the oxygen molecule, but we don't need to worry about that. We just need to worry about where these bonding positions are going to be. Now this one here is pretty difficult to bond to, because um, it is pretty sterically hindered. There's quite a lot of stuff around there, and it's very difficult for another molecule to approach that position. These ones here, these are bonding positions. That's a bonding position, and that's a bonding position. So that is the beta position, and that's the number four position. And the most common bond that you get in lignin, if I was to draw here, uh, a bond here to another molecule. It would look like that. And that's the four position. That is called a beta O4 bond. We can also get bonds at the three and the five positions. But of course, the three and the five position there has got these substituents on it. So that can't bond. The three position there can't bond because of that substituent. Whereas here, the three and the five are um, open. So this type of structure can have more cross links than that type of structure. And that is somewhere in between. So cross link density is related to the, the rigidity of the lignin macromolecule. 
Uh, and by controlling the ratio of these three components, um, nature is able to control the material properties of the lignin. I'm sorry I looked at my watch, but it's getting near lunchtime. 